Hi, uh, my name is Kyle Horsley. I go to AIM here and I study composition and production. Uh, I'm currently in Tri-6 or approaching Tri-6. And uh, this is my SP404. So yeah, the, the 404, it's very different machine it can it's very powerful it's uh it's got some charismatic sounds it's got some uh, definitely got some character that uh influences the sound a lot and the effects are very handy very easy to grab very quick destructive can be though very tasty so say if i take this kick drum for example i can hear there's like a bit too much low frequencies in it and then i have a range of effects that i can apply things like the isolator which is like an eq uh, so i can just remove all low frequencies and add high frequencies or remove I ha all high frequencies and just have the low frequencies and i can sort of use that to to pre-shape to like mix uh, sounds before i then go to use them the, the, there's two main methods to the 404's workflow. One of them is the resample method, which I'll mainly be demonstrating today. And the other one is the pattern sequencer, which some people use, some people love, some people don't. Uh, it's got its own quirks and then it's got its own benefits as well. So what I might do is I'll just take a bunch of these sounds and I'll copy them over while I resample them uh, to shape them up, uh, pre-mix them in a, in a way, and then I'll put them all together. And, and make a beat out of it. So I've got these chords here as well, which I've like pre-chopped and uh, I'm sort of drumming, drum along to this thing. So what I'll do is like, I don't know, like I was probably feel like they should add some reverb. One major limitation of this machine is I can use one effect at one time. I can use that across all pads or I can uh, sort of multi resample. And the more I do that, the more I degrade the sound and the more the character starts to come to life. And uh, so I might even do a couple. So, so on these chords, I'll probably uh, add some reverb. So on this, uh, everything works from these three dials. So that's like a mix, so that's like full wet. I probably don't want that much and then high frequencies and low frequencies, which is tied to the decay time as well. Yeah, it sounds a bit nicer. I've got a bit of a vibe going on there. Uh, so what I might do is I'll resample those by clicking resample record, head over to this other page where I got some space. I'll put them in the same place. Uh, so that way my brain knows where they are when I go to record them. Cool. Next one. Resample, resample record. There's an, other limitations is like voice limits. So if I try to play too many stereo samples at once, stereo samples at once, then I'll, uh, I'll lose sound. It sort of drops out. So I might have to record the loop first and then drum over the top, which is another quirk that um, is handy in some ways as well. I've got my parts, I'm just going to resample them into a bit of a loop and then I can drum over that loop and then apply other effects and add parts and, and whatnot. Uh, so I'm going to put it here because I've got my parts here. Okay, record that. So now it's waiting for me to hit record. So I'm going to play my parts. And... All right, so I should have this as a loop here. What I might do at this stage is find a spare pad on another page somewhere, say. And what I can do now is I can make that loop longer if I choose to make it longer. And uh, by adding the other parts to it, and then I can keep that loop repeating and then make like a good, you know, minute or two minute flip beat or something out of there. Yeah, and that's like the crux of how you would put, I guess, the foundations of a beat together. It's got some cool effects like to add in some like bass for example. Everything works on like the right dial is like a balance. So I'll just take up that last kick drum.
So record the sample, mark the point, resample with an effect, and then repeat. And that's just how you make a beat on this. I guess this is the workflow written right on my shirt.